Hi, and welcome to the uh, Unite 2017 Community Building Panel hosted by me, Keir Whitaker. Before I introduce the panelists, I'm going to run over a short deck showing you some of the initiatives that we at Shopify uh, are doing around community building, as well as the people out there in the partner ecosystem. So what is the partner community? Well, to me, it's the brand ambassadors, the advocates, the knowledge sharers. And I truly believe that Shopify wouldn't be where it is today without the people out there doing amazing things in the partner ecosystem. As I said earlier, I work on the partnerships team and we are dedicated to helping build, sustain and encourage this community in a number of ways. Before turning our attention to the many wonderful initiatives that people out there are doing for themselves, let's look at how we are helping bind the ties of this community together. Of course, Unite happened earlier this year. It was the second iteration in San Francisco and over a thousand partners attended with over 200 people from Shopify also attending. This was double the size of the event in uh, 2016, and we really look forward to this every year. In 2017, uh, sorry, 2018, it will be happening in Toronto, and more details of that will be released shortly. But as well as giving the company the opportunity to speak to you, tell you about the roadmap, where things are going, uh, new initiatives, etc., it's a great way for all of us to meet, to share stories, and build new relationships, especially with people we may have only met online or collaborated with virtually. Another great way to meet up and get involved in your local community is through the partner meetups. Over the last two years, these have blossomed. In 2016, there were over 50 partner hosted meetups attracting over 3,000 attendees. We're on target to increase both the number of events and attendees in 2017. Whether it's learning from merchants or hearing from partners, it's a great way to get involved and broaden your network. Over the last few years, we've also run the e-commerce design awards. It's a great way for us to celebrate and showcase all the great work being done by you on the Shopify platform. Many of the winners have told us that the added recognition has helped in growing their businesses. In 2017, we're also going to be announcing an iteration of this called the Shopify Commerce Awards. So please do keep an eye out for this. Um, we'll be announcing this on the partner blog in due course. Last year, in 2016, we wanted to try something new. A full day bringing partners together to share their experiences of growing their Shopify focused businesses. We called it a day with Shopify and on the day we had over 100 partners from 11 different countries join us in Bristol in the United Kingdom. Unite is a great opportunity for Shopify as a company to share its roadmap and its plans and its ideas with you. And the day with Shopify kind of flips this on its head. What Shopify brings together all these amazing people doing amazing things, we prefer to turn all the talks over to people working uh, in the ecosystem. As such, it's a great opp uh, opportunity to share with your peers, whether it be your war stories, your technical and design tips, growth strategies, and much, much more. The feedback was so good, we decided we'd do a few more in, this, uh, in 2017, and this is where we're going. We'll be headed to Vancouver in Canada in October, uh, New York in September. Uh, in September, we're also hitting up Birmingham in the United Kingdom, and uh, Bangalore will happen in November, and finishing off with Melbourne in Australia. So please do keep uh, an eye out for more information of that. We'd love to see you there. As well as in-person events such as Unite or the Meetups or A Day with Shopify, we work hard to bring you online content that will help you grow, learn, and work more effectively with Shopify in your business. Our partner blog with contributions from many of you, uh, the panelists we have today, uh, and many of you uh, out there watching this presentation may well have also contributed, continues to go from strength to strength. If you haven't considered writing for us, I really encourage you to do so. It's a great way to broaden out your skills, um, put your company's brand in front of many of the partners and other people who read this blog, but also a great way to share your knowledge and give back to the community. So if you've uh, any tips on business, front-end development, apps, themes, workflows, or anything else, do drop us a line and we'll uh, get back to you with uh, how you can contribute to the blog. We've also been hard at work over the last few years on expanding growth series. Um, I'm delighted to announce that uh, Volume 3 is now available and that will be focusing on how to build a profitable business. Uh, once again, it features many invaluable contributions from people working in our partner uh, ecosystem. And if you haven't got that, then you can download a copy online. But you may not have seen some of the earlier editions. Uh, the green covered uh, Grow Volume 1 was called A Beginner's Guide to Growing Your Business. The purple uh, Volume 2 was uh, be called, called Becoming a Full Stack Web Design Freelancer. And as I mentioned just now, Grow Volume 3 is called Building a Profitable Web Design Business. All three are available online to download. And if you meet us at any of our events that we either support or host ourselves, you'll be able to pick up a paper copy as well. 
Education is a huge focus for us. Not only do we want uh, you to do your best Shopify work, we also want you to be the best at your craft. And for this reason, we've started running a, a regular webinar series featuring some of the industry's best uh, practitioners, uh, covering from UX and UI to animation, um, responsive design, uh, as well as covering business as well. Uh, many of these people have, have had well-attended webinars and the feedback has been exceptional. Um, some of the uh, people on here you'll notice are, are from our partner ecosystem as well. And in 2017, we'll be growing out the Shopify focused content to not only cover business and marketing and growth strategies, but also covering a lot of the technical aspects of the platform as well. We regularly get over 400 people attending these webinars. And so if you are interested, again, in contributing to our webinar series, do get in touch. It's a great way to share your knowledge and put yourself at uh, uh, sort of as a domain expert within your field. There are many other places that you can find out there in the ecosystem as well, not just run by ourselves at Shopify. Medium is increasingly popular and many articles are published with a focus on Shopify. Just search for the Shopify or Shopify themes, tags, and uh, great articles will come up that, and you can subscribe to those. And the authors obviously um, not only publish on Shopify, but they'll talk about their e-commerce businesses as well. It's a great way to learn and also connect with people working in the space. Podcasts are really popular these days, and this is the unofficial Shopify podcast by Kurt Elster. But again, just uh, crack open your iPhone podcasting app and search for Shopify or e-commerce, and you'll find lots and lots of podcasts covering all aspects of the industry. Facebook is a huge um, space for discussing e-commerce as well. Here's one particular uh, Facebook group called Shopify Entrepreneurs. Uh, very, very active, lots of great advice. Thoroughly recommend you get involved in that as well. Many of us watching this will be regular Slack users and Ecom Tool is a Slack community uh, really created to bring Shopify um, partners, uh, as it says here, uh, Shopify lovers together. Um, not only are partners represented there, but many people from Shopify itself dive in and get involved in many of the conversations. And if you haven't checked that out, I thoroughly uh, encourage you to do so. Books as well, this one by uh, Paul Reader and Kurt Elster, e-commerce bootcamp. Yes, it does cover mostly merchant strategies, but I think as partners, uh, you, you, it doesn't hurt to have a real insight into what makes successful merchants because this can only help us get better in the offerings that um, you know we put to our clients as well. And blogs, of course, many of the partners out there are blogging regularly, giving insights into merchants as well as uh, insights into how Shopify as a platform can uh, uh, be, be bettered via apps and uh, you know integrations and all kinds of other things and this one by we make websites is a great example of that and uh, again uh, Alex will be joining us shortly and we'll be sharing some of his insights into uh, community building as well online courses are becoming increasingly popular and Skillshare is a popular platform for this over the last couple of years we've worked with some of our partners to put together some great courses and if you haven't checked them out I thoroughly encourage you to do so this particular one here on uh, advanced Shopify theme development by Gavin Ballard goes a little deeper into some of the um, more technical aspects of front-end development things around Ajax uh, but as well looking around automation and deployment so if you haven't had an opportunity to uh, check out Gavin's course uh, I really recommend doing so Stack Overflow, full of questions and full of answers. Again, you can subscribe to these particular searches and uh, it's a great way to uh, brush up on your knowledge and, and get help from the community as well. So that's just some of the things that uh, we as a partnerships team are doing and many of the people out there in the ecosystem are doing as well. So why don't we just have a quick uh, discussion about why it's worth getting involved in the community and why you might want to start building out your own sort of Shopify focused or e-commerce focused community. Well, I think first and foremost, it allows you to share your knowledge and best practices with peers. This is uh, never a bad thing and will, um, again, give you recognition within the community. The more people you meet, the more things you get involved in, the more collaborations that you will uh, be open to. Uh, building out your network of people working in the space is always a good thing. And men, we, we hear regularly from partners that many of the uh, successful businesses were, were forged by people meeting at events or, or through um, online communities. It allows you to become a recognized leader in your domain. And again, this opens up many opportunities, not only things like speaking at events, um, but also... Um, you know uh, the ability to um, attract work by um, you know people googling e-commerce for example or Shopify and some of your talks or community stuff will, will come to the top and again this gives you a head start on some of your competitors but beyond that it does allow your peers to become your biggest advocates 
not everyone can do everything. So for example, um, when someone might need an app developer, if you're well known in that space, they may well get in touch uh, and bring you in on that project. And beyond that, as I said earlier, it allows you to demonstrate your value not only to your peers, but also to potential customers. If they're finding you through your podcast or community building, they're pre-qualifying you as a, as a potential vendor. They can see your skills uh, and they, they, they know what value you offer and uh, you can kind of cut out a lot of that kind of business courtship, if you like. And again, it allows you to fill your sales funnel with potential leads. The more collaboration that you do, the more community involvement that you um, get involved with, uh, the more people will know about you and your skills and the word travels and people simply to start getting in touch with you instead of you having to do the outreach. So hopefully you found some of that uh, interesting. Maybe there's some um, initiatives there that you didn't know about and that you can check out afterwards. But I'd like to now turn to the panel and introduce all of the people joining me today who are involved uh, in many different aspects of community building with a particular focus on Shopify. Joining us first will be uh, Stephen Peralta. He's the partner and creative lead of Sovi Creative based out of Toronto, Canada. Next, we'll have Alex O'Byrne, who's the co-founder of London-based We Make Websites. Kurt Elster is joining us from Chicago in the US. Uh, he's the founder of EtherCycle and hosts the unofficial Shopify podcast, as many other things um, as well, including Facebook videos around e-commerce and, uh, as I showed you in the deck there, um, the e-commerce bootcamp book. And finally, Natasha Murphy, who's the founder of Nicely Built, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you so much uh, for joining us and uh, making this panel possible uh, over, over this um, virtual meeting. So. I thought I'd start by really diving into a little bit about kind of the motivation um, for your involvement with the community. Obviously, this takes time, it takes money, uh, it takes a lot of effort and preparation. So maybe start with you, Alex. What made you want to sort of start speaking around e-commerce, but obviously you also run the very successful London Shopify Meetup? So the Meetup was really just a chance for us to get to know more merchants in London because we knew that there was a huge number of Shopify merchants here, but they were all kind of hidden away, hidden away doing their own thing. And, you know, obviously if they get in touch with us, then we, you know, can begin um, to work with them. But the meetup was a good way of kind of accelerating that and also bringing together a community that really already had the, existed or the potential existed and it was just a case of getting them all in the same room so that they could all talk and as you would find in most professional communities people have generally got the same sort of problems and the things and war stories and things that they want to share and talk about so um we started originally just uh meeting up in a pub basically and, and getting people together that were interested in shopify and then somebody got in touch who um, she kind of made her millions and said, look, I'll talk to your crowd if you want. And that kind of forced us to kick up a gear and get a proper space with AV equipment and seating and all that sort of thing. And then from there, we've kept that talks program up and the audience size has grown itself as the events become more well-known and Shopify has become more well-known. And then um, recently it's just yeah, it's been really special. Like it, it, we probably attract about 150 people each time and we've switched to a, a panel sort of uh, format. So the, the, there'll be three, two or three merchants and then a sort of industry expert. And then usually our growth manager, Tim, sort of uh, panels it, uh, yeah, uh, coordinates the panel. And yeah, it's been really good. And then that, of course, creates all sorts of conversations and, and connections and all that good stuff afterwards. So it was easy, basically. Well, not to organize, but it was easy to find the people to, to come because we had such a, a singular message, and that was to build an event around Shopify. Right, right. So did you um, did you start that really as a primary driver to, to find clients, or was it really that you just wanted to see We Make Website, which is the company you co-founded, to be the kind of preeminent uh, Shopify slash e-commerce agency in London? Or yeah, a bit of motivation. Both. Yeah, um, it, the perception thing is good, but I, I always like to run this test with our marketing, which is if this was the last month of business that we had or last 
you know, their cash flow, would we still be doing this, right? And there's quite a lot of things when you look at marketing campaigns you've got running away, you think, mm, maybe we wouldn't do that one. The meetup, I wanted to belong in the category where we would continue doing it, where actually there was a direct return on investment from running the event, because obviously it's quite expensive to like run in terms of time and space and all that stuff. So we really try and do, try and get a, a, a return on it in the sense that clients find us there and then work with us. But what happens as with all marketing is that you never know which bit worked exactly. So there's a famous saying, you know, I don't know which half of my marketing money works. <laughs> and it meet up to be like that, like it's usually a touch point on the way where someone might have found us through Twitter or through Google or through the event itself, or it could be anything. And all these things come together to build the, the, the trust in us, I guess, at the start of the customer journey. And then um, yeah. hopefully they work with us. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. I mean, uh, so Natasha, obviously you you started running the uh, the meetup in Atlanta. And when we were speaking before um, we put this panel together, you were sort of saying how, uh, you know, you've only been doing it a short while. But I'm interested to know kind of what your motivation was behind doing that and if you have any sort of uh, parallels to what Alex has just said. Yeah, so I think that our motivations were a little different and by our, I mean my. Um, sure. it, I feel like uh, Shopify is still a relatively new thing in the, the Southeast. And so I was mostly looking not only to find merchants, but just to find other partners that were working with the platform um, just so I could have someone to talk to about it. So, and our meetup is very much like a mix of merchants and other partners. And um, we've seen some lead generation come out of it just as kind of the organizing sponsor, but for us, like it's really more about um, community with a capital C So we try to be really inclusive and let other partners know that we want them to come. Um, so. Yeah. And have you, have you found like collaboration as a result of that? Have you people that you've worked with or is it mainly uh, as any clients come through that or is it just no, sharing problems and you know, yeah, war stories as Alex called them? Yeah, it's more sharing problems, war stories. Um, we all met up at the Unite event this, this past month, like made a point to kind of hang out. Um, I feel like it's really just kind of a way for people to meet in an informal setting so that when they meet in a formal setting, like the, those meetings tend to be a lot more successful and because those connections are already in place and existent. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And, and just turning to you, Stefan, I know uh, obviously uh, Sobe Creative, the company that you, you run yourself, um, have done amazing things with the Toronto Shopify meetup. Uh, and just again, from chatting with you, I think the, the audience seems to be a, a good split between people doing similar stuff and merchants as well. How, how do you think that's helped your business and in particular, I guess, the, the sort of Toronto area? Yeah, for sure. So um, it's definitely grown our ecosystem exponentially. Um, and the benefit of that is um, primarily, let's talk about through a merchant and through a partner. So a good mar a merchant understands the wants and needs of a partner and the partner understands the perspective and the whole mentality of a merchant as well. So when we brought both partners and merchants into our uh, community uh, with our meetups, what we found is that um, our ecosystem exponentially grew through an educational perspective. Um, the second times when we'd see both these partners and merchants come into our, um, uh, come into our meetup, they're immediately communicating with each other. Um, they started building a foundation where they found what was relevant through both the merchant and perspective, uh, uh, merchant and partner perspective, excuse me. And that's what allowed um, our community to exponentially grow and be a lot more effective. It's not the same conversations that are constantly um, coming up. It's conversations that are a lot more relevant and a lot more beneficial for both parties to be involved with. So by having both merchants and partners, um, you definitely see a very strong growth in the ecosystem as both organizations that are knowledgeable in the e comp space and dominating primarily in the Toronto uh, ecosystem. Interesting. Do you find, have you found that maybe uh, obviously, the, you, for want of a better phrase, your competitors come along and they use it as a, as a way of interacting, you, you're kind of bringing all these people together, is there a downside to uh, the business by doing these things? Yeah, so we don't let any of our partners, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know what, there's a, still a huge market, op, uh, market, uh, market op, uh, out there within Shopify that we still love when our partners come in because it's kind of like Alex mentioned. 
Um, you, everyone has very similar stories to share, and especially through an agency, agency perspective, um, there's lots of interesting stories that have been shared and allows each of us, um, all, of our organization, all of our organizations to grow um, very efficiently. So um, basically to answer your question, um, we uh, love when partners come into our space, um, our community group, they definitely offer that value that maybe we can offer ourselves. And that's what grows the ecosystem and definitely allows everyone to scale their organization, scale their business objectives that much better. So yeah, no, I love it when they come in. That's really interesting. You, you touched on, on education now, and I think, you know, turning to, to Kurt here, um, uh, the only one of them, uh, you guys, who doesn't run a meetup as far as I'm aware. Um, but uh, Kurt, you've been very big in kind of, uh, I, I would call it education. You, you've really put out on, and you still do on a very regular basis, kind of, uh, you know, all of the secrets to running a successful kind of web agency with a particular focus on uh, Shopify and e-commerce. And many people might say, you know, you, you've, well, you have, you build a community around that. You're very active in the Facebook groups, you've, um, courses, e-books, um, et cetera. Um, Many people might argue that, you know, yes, you are building a community, but why are you giving away all your secrets? How would you, how would you respond to that? So having secrets working like privately behind closed doors really does you no good. When I, you know, I, everything I do has been built around, like all of my marketing efforts, content marketing has been built around working in public. Um, and the more I work in public, the more I share that secret sauce, people don't like, sure, some people will go do that stuff. And that's fine. I like that. I have an abundance mentality in that respect. Um, but what it does is it, it builds trust. Uh, it shows people, hey, this, you know, this guy knows what he's doing. He's helpful. He's here to help. And then maybe out of that, someone asks me a question. And that turns into a conversation. That turns into a relationship. That turns into a professional engagement. But in the, by doing that, I never have to sell to anyone. I don't want to be a salesman. I don't want to do sales. No one wants to be sold to. So I just go. I work in public, and I, I educate, and I try to help. Um, and then, you know, along the way, that'll keep me top of mind. So if someone does need, need help with their, their Shopify business to grow it, they may reach out to me. And by then, it just, you know, when we get on the phone to talk about it, there's no more, you know, it's not a sales call. It's just, hey, do we get along? Do we want to work together? So in a sense, you're kind of pre-qualifying potential clients. Yeah, without ever having to pre-qualify anybody. And that's just, hey, here's, you know, here's the stuff. Um, and along the way, you know, I, most of the podcast is me either, you know, it's, there's only two kinds of podcast episodes I do really is I interview a store owner and we're up to the 117 episodes, quarter million downloads, um, or I interview another e-commerce professional like Alex has been on, has been on, um, and it's been fantastic. And I have no issue referring work that's not perfect for me to the two other Shopify partners like, like Alex. And I know I got to add add you other kind folks to my, my list of referrals. <laughs> yeah, I've also been on the podcast. So I think you, you've absolutely got to invite uh, Natasha and Stefan as well at this point. Uh, I'll get For it on sure. record. <laughs> I'll write um, it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> easy business, isn't it? There you go. So I, I guess, you know, when you talked earlier, Alex, around like uh, return on investment and this, this was yeah. a conscious decision. I mean, Obviously, you know, there's an element of altruism in these things. It is great to get people together and share those stories and, and um, you know, learn from each other. But, but how do you measure ROI and how important is that to your business? Is, is this a, a very much one of your sole focuses in terms of marketing? Um, yeah. So just to, to distinguish, I guess, that the merchant meetup is our merchant strategy. And that's why I'm such a focus there. But as you know, Keir, we do a lot where like uh, definitely a lot of speaking and a lot of mm. um, events where we're talking more with partners or other agencies. And then for that, like I have the exact same opinion as everybody else that it's not like if I give away our strategy, that's like not really a problem. It's not, it's not the information or the idea that's the hard bit. It's the actual doing it that takes the time. So yeah, I think we all rise together in that sense. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, for measuring it, yeah, I mean, it, it's super hard to measure. There's things you can track, like number of emails you get, you know, from an event. So we might get three or four hundred emails from an event because obviously a lot of people sign up but don't come. Um, and then we can track the people that do come, and you can see that profile over time. So that is really the only thing you can track. Like, uh, oh, the other thing actually is on our inquiries, we always ask people, "How did you find out about us?" And 
sometimes people will say, you know, I found you through a friend, but then I came to your event. So then we mark that so we know that the event has made a difference. Um, so yeah, that's how we do it. Yeah. What, what about yourself, Stefan? Do you, how do you, um, have you been able to measure the impact on Survey Creative from, from doing these events? Yeah, um, Alex definitely touched upon email, which is great. Um, for our events, we definitely collect on a similar basis the amount of emails because um, we definitely get a, a huge inquiry, but not too many, uh, not as many people actually show up. Um, a great thing we implemented um, internally at Sovi is um, live streaming, but through Facebook. So a great, uh, a great ROI around that is we're definitely looking like the industry leaders, despite us af actually offering that content. But we're funneling everyone into our Facebook page where that's where the live stream is. So. Um, in terms of an ROI basis, we definitely get some engagement on Facebook. We get more Facebook likes. Um, we even get reviews saying, oh, man, these guys are so knowledgeable, despite us not even, uh, us not even offering the content. So um, through an ROI perspective, we're not the newest agency and we're not the oldest Shopify uh, Plus agency. So in our perspective, it's a nice, it's a nice way to start growing our audience, um, growing our relationship through a merchant and perspective. So those are, the, those are the ROI that we typically measure. But social has probably been um, our best return. Um, so far. Yeah, what, what about yourself, Natasha? I know you're at a slightly different stage um, in the kind of building out of the um, of the meetup, but what are your goals and ambitions for it beyond uh, what you've already described? Yeah, so right now, I think we're similar to Alex in that we are kind of tracking people as they come in through the reservation system. Um, so, but my, I'd like to build um, something that's going to allow us to get a little bit more in terms of just analytics. So I actually bought shopifymeetup.com. So if anybody <laughs> wants like a London.shopify meetup, um, but just as a way to kind of like consolidate like the invite link, the um, newsletter sign up and um, just to kind of like have it all packaged and we can put the fix, Facebook pixel in place um, analytics and just to try to get capture more information so that we can actually calculate an ROI because we haven't been able to so far. So how, um, when, you're, when you're at the meetup yourself, how do you, uh, do you take time to sort of pitch your, your business or, or, I mean, how, how involved are you or is it really that kind of the convener, I, I am the authority and that, that does enough? Right. That's interesting. So I typically, um, I, I, I'm really active in Creative Mornings here in Atlanta right. and there's a branding agency that kind of sponsors that and runs it. And so I've really kind of based the way I approach our meetup. Um, on how they run there. So I don't make nicely built, uh, like a, I don't come out and say nicely built. It's more like, this is the Shopify meetup and we organized it and here are our presenters. So at the very end, I might say something or it might come up during Q and A or a lot of times I've worked with our presenters. So they'll mention work that we've done, but um, we try to be pretty kind of like behind the curtain uh, and, and not push it too hard because we don't want other partners to think that it's too unfair of an advantage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kurt, you obviously, uh, again, just turning to you um, in terms of the, the kind of things that you output, uh, how, how much of Kurt is in Shopify podcast and uh, various other things that you do, or do you definitely think of it more as a, a kind of a, co a content marketing strategy? So I, I, it is a, for sure, it is a content marketing strategy, you know, and we're, we're using content marketing tools around it. But as far as like it being some contrived thing, I always, I really believe in, in having an authentic voice. So all of our content marketing, be it emails, podcasts, screencasts, YouTube videos, whatever it is, it, it's still just me. It may be a bit of, it, there may be some shtick in there. It's like 20% more me. But the reason I know it works is when I get on the phone with someone, they go, like within 15 minutes, they'll go, I feel like I already know you. I said, oh yeah, how's that? I said, well, you know, I've listened to, and then they say like your podcast, your screencast, or read your book, because all of that stuff is in my voice. So when we get on, like they already know who I am and what I'm like and what I'm about. So then when we talk, it's like, okay, you know, I, I'm that person. So I totally believe it just in being, being authentic and being yourself and that stuff. Like people buy for people, not brands. So I'm very much, that content marketing approach is very much sell human to human. Mm, yeah, I think that's interesting. It's something Alex touched on as well when he said around uh, the sort of speaking engagements that he does. And I know uh, Alex and I have worked together on uh, a few things as well uh, in Europe, um, but it, you, you speak at a lot of events around e-commerce. Um, and obviously, if you're talking to your peers, how, how do you think that helps with, with the business angle? How does 
speak, speaking to people like yourselves help grow your authority? Is that a question you, to me? I'll ask uh, anyone, anyone, oh. Alex, any, any of you. Dive in. <laughs> yeah. Shall I go? go right, I'll go, I'll go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, speaking to your peers, hugely valuable because, you know, there's, I don't know how many Shopify partners there are, but there's 400,000 Shopify stores and any one store can hire multiple partners depending on their specialty. So in doing that, like if you just establish yourself as, hey, if you, know, if you have a good positioning statement and if you can be top of mind for a specific pain or problem a Shopify store owner has and then teach other people about that and teach other partners about that, when they have a client with that pain or problem, it is likely they are going to, well, maybe not likely, but it, I see it happen regularly. They're going to refer that person to you. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Like you should stand out by your own positioning rather than the fact that you're kind of like hiding something or like not joining in in the conversation. Like it should be that you can set, be at an event full of Shopify agencies and still, you know, stand out or Shopify partners. Yeah. And, and not only stand out by wearing a camouflage jacket, right, Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who may not have attended Unite, uh, Kurt's well known for the peacocking, as he calls it, with his uh, infamous <laughs> camo jacket. Next year, the pants or trousers, as we call them, have to have to come as well. But, no, there's a matching tie too. It's quite yeah. the quite the spectacle. <laughs> um, I'd like to turn the the focus a little bit to kind of the the, the time investment and then sort of. Um, that maybe some of the financials around it because obviously I think you've all talked to the benefits of putting yourselves out there bringing people together and the kind of sharing the stories but also the potential in terms of attracting new clients and kind of pre-qualifying your own business in the eyes of potential clients which I think is, is a really interesting angle but uh, Stefan I know that we've got uh, when we were in, in Toronto and we had coffee you were talking about some of the uh, initiatives that you were doing such as the, the food and beverage and the live stream it obviously takes a lot of time but also a lot of investment I mean what, what made you decide to, to invest, you know, uh, from what you were telling me, it was maybe a team member working solidly for a, a number of days for each meetup and a considerable amount of money. What, what really made you uh, decide that that was a, a really sensible business decision, if you will? Definitely. Well, um, we knew that these meetups were going to be somewhat unique to what we offer um, at Sovi Creative. So we wanted to go above and beyond um, your typical meetup. So typically when you go to a meetup in Toronto, which um, it's, pretty engaging overall. Um, you go in, you have a specific topic, hopefully in a really nice venue. Um, you typically have beer and pizza, and that's always been like the standard for these meetups. Um, but luckily we've been able to work with Shopify, have their venue be our venue for the community meetup. So that sets the bar really high. So when you have a great venue, you need to constantly keep on complimenting that. So when it comes to the food, we go above and beyond. We try to keep it somewhat gourmet for those people who are, uh, uh, really into that as well as um, our drinks we can't do much but we try to keep our beer as cold as possible because people are very picky <laughs> when it comes to that but um, yeah I'll be completely transparent we typically allocate about a thousand dollars per event as well as we typically allocate five people within our team um, one person to handle the door um, which is very important because it's your your first introduction so you want to make sure that's that's a uh, starts off on a really good solid note um, you have a member who hosts the event. You have a member who starts live streaming the event. You have a member who's handing out the food. And you have one last member who is actually doing all the videography, recapping the, the meetup as much as possible, just for people, as well as for marketing material, as well as um, for people who want to just get a quick trailer glimpse of what these meetups are all about. So with five people, about $1,000 we allocate personally into these, um, into these meetups. It's a little bit of a significant investment for us, but um, the outcome is constantly growing. We're constantly seeing a really engaged community coming out of it. So um, it, it, it definitely works for us and that's why we continue doing, uh, that's why we continue throwing these meetups. Yeah, uh, uh, Natasha, you said as well that you're obviously involved in, in the Creative Mornings, which I know is um, kind of time intensive as well. How have you found this kind of running the Shopify meetup? It's pretty time intensive and we, we've been attempting to streamline it. So now we have a checklist that's like two months in advance, one month in advance, so we can advance day before day of. And that's been helpful because then we can just kind of repeat that each time. Um, but for us personally, we really ask that the, the presenters uh, slash sponsors that come and speak each month um, help us with the, the investment. So typically we'll ask them to either provide food or to provide the space. 
um, because like quite often they are often they're vendors. And so they're really looking to get new customers from this meetup. So it's a, an opportunity for them as well. So we tend to, to split that as much as we can. That's interesting. And, yeah. and they're very open to that, are they? Yeah. Yeah. And so typically they will um, put some financial, uh, we'll put some money in the pot uh, for the venues and food mm -hmm. and drink. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, just before we, we wrap up, I've got, I would really like to turn to some of maybe the, the things that didn't go well or some of the things, the lessons that you've learned or <laughs> some very unexpected outcomes of community building, whether it be from the, the podcast or, you know, the, the things you do on Facebook, Kurt, or to the meetups and the, the kind of sessions that you run, Alex. So someone tell me a most unexpected, could be good, could be bad, uh, sort of outcome of, of uh, your community initiatives. Uh, I get so much awful outreach email. Like I could do a master clinic on how not to write an outreach email based on the terrible outreach emails I get. <laughs> just like really awful stuff. And then the follow-ups are even worse, just like mind-bendingly bad outreach. Um, because like when you work in public that much and people go, oh, this guy has an audience and he'll put me on it if I could just badger him enough. It's like, no, just give me a good pitch, right? Uh, tell me how you're gonna help my audience. So that's like that, I mean, that's not a big deal, but that's like minorly, moderately frustrating. It's just the, the inbox overhead. Yeah, for sure. You smiled when I asked the question, Natasha, so I'm thinking you've got something. <laughs> oh, we, we had, a, it's been a few months ago, but we had a meetup and the AV equipment did not work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we were already 15 minutes over from where we were supposed to start. So it was kind of like, all right, what do we do? So I um, entertained the crowd for 15 minutes, uh, just kind of asking who had their first sale this month. Um, here's something you might not have known. And it was really hard for me because I have a hard time with public speaking. I get very nervous. So, um, but ever since then, ton, tons of people have emailed or they come up to me and they're like, we remember that. And that was really funny. And so it's kind of, it's helped me kind of grow into the meetup as like a, a speaker. And I don't, I can speak a lot easier now that the worst has happened. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I'm sure all of us on this uh, call have, have had similar AV nightmares uh, over time. Uh, I know I've certainly had a few. Um, what about you, Stefan? Uh, yeah, just recapping what you said about AV. Make sure that's working. Um, <laughs> if you can't project, uh, you definitely look like you're a lead singer of a metal band with your face being all red and just trying to scream <laughs> to the audience. Um, our biggest, uh, one of the biggest caveats we have with our meetups is trying to get as many sponsors involved. Uh, more sponsors, more stakeholders, more stakeholders, more problems. So um, that's why we decided to definitely go through the self-investing approach. Um, so just keep in mind, if you want to bring more sponsors on uh, for any kind of reasons, financial reasons, uh, op marketing opportunities, that's great. But definitely understand that they're definitely going to want to return on it as well. So definitely have some sort of guideline you want to set well in advance um, just to ensure there's no conflictions. And uh, your original goal with these meetups is constantly growing and not being reevaluated by someone else. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Alex, you must have something. Well, some kind of hideous failure. No, I, I said it could be. <laughs> I said it could be a really positive outcome as well, or unexpected was the word I chose. <laughs> I, I used to present ours, and then the first five minutes, I thought like you know I would like try and get everyone to laugh, right? Which like I was doing like a kind of really bad stand-up routine and then my team thought it was hilarious because i was just like dying basically so they thought it was funny but, they were know, laughing at you that's now now tim does it now yeah so i'm not involved but <laughs> I, what has been inspiring actually is the past couple of events uh yeah about five or six of our team go along as well and organize it and the last couple i've come along like almost as a as a audience member and watched them and it's quite amazing actually to see the quality of the content and the size of the audience that comes in and uh, I, I guess a, a thing that used to go wrong quite a lot is as you know Kia for running events sometimes when you have people presenting like they, they overrun and all stuff like that whereas we switched it now to a panel which means that they don't have to prepare as much and they can just come join us on stage and we just ask them questions and also we can guide the structure a bit and make it a bit more like you know, uh, ask the right questions at the right time so it's been pretty slick recently, but yeah, I mean, in the early days, we had all sorts of like terrible events, but all good now, hopefully. 
Yeah, no, this this has been great, guys. Thank you so much for sharing a lot of the, the insights. I know we could talk for a lot longer, uh, and I'm sure we will at some point in the future. But um, just to, to, to wrap up, um, for the people who are watching, maybe you could just, um, uh, you know, let them know any uh, useful websites or the company names just so that they've got a reference point. So why don't you start, Alex, and then I'll, we'll go around. Well, my, so I'm saying, like, uh, useful stuff for organising the community. No, I was going to say, where can people find you online? That's probably a better way of putting it. Oh, me, right. Yeah, go to <laughs> wemakewebsites.com. And um, if you need Shopify help, that's what we do. Yeah. And Stefan? Um, sovicreative.com. Keep an eye out for sovicreative.com slash community. Within the next month, we're going to be rebranding our site, focusing specifically on a dedicated community landing page. So if you're in the North America, well, anywhere in the world and want to catch those live streams, sovicreative, S-O-V-I, creative.com slash community. Shopify stuff, like Alex said, or if you just need a hug in general, we're, we're here for you. <laughs> yeah, Alex didn't offer the hug. I see where you're going. Yeah, it's one <laughs> up on him. I'll be calling Stefan for my hug. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what, a, what about yourself, Natasha? Uh, Nicelybuilt.com is where you can find our company, and we Shopify services, and coming within hopefully the next month or so, atlanta.shopifymeetup.com. Um, if you go to shopifymeetup.com right now, it just redirects for our MailChimp signup page. So I want to try to go ahead and, and get something going there and also share, share that with anyone. Great. And find a cut. Uh, check out uh, my name, curtelster.com. Sign up for my newsletter. I will send you podcast updates. And if you have any question at all, send me a thoughtful, thoughtful question. I will send you a thoughtful reply. A thoughtful question. Not, not, uh, not a hideous outreach. Yes, none of those. <laughs> those I click unsubscribe for you. Brilliant. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thanks for finding the time. And um, I found it really uh, interesting and, and learned a lot. And I'm sure everyone else who watches this will. So thanks again. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye.